Welcome everyone and, and what a great day we have here in beautiful West Louisville in this great historic Olmstead Park and what is and what a happening park it is with improvements and community enhancements even our governor of the Commonwealth made a visit here last week we have the mayor we have MSD and a whole lot more here today it just shows how important parks and recreation activities are in having a safe and vibrant community this has been a long time in coming and could not have happened without some key people here with us today. I don't think Big, Big Ben Watkins or Janice ever dreamed in 1969 it would become historic dirt bowl and a book detailing it, ESPN the magazine doing a feature, and, in, and now is known as the Ben Watkins and Janice Carter dope dirt bowl to celebrate their vision. A big round of applause for them. You know, when Mayor Fisher took office, uh, he said, we need to bring the dirt bowl back to prominence it once had across our country, not just Louisville. We have followed his mantra of continuous improvement, making small improvements over the past four or five years, but nothing like we see here today. So keeping with this vibrant spirit and with all due respect and reverence, I did choose some theme music for all of today's speakers. So without further ado, and a compassionate community leader, a welcome for our mayor, Mr. Greg Fisher. Hold up, we got some music for you. Thank you, Marty. Marty has too much time on his hands. And he will never be a DJ like Stevie Edwards here in the house. We're, Stevie, thank you, brother, for the you. soundtrack you laid down for the Dirt Bowl. It was fantastic. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks to really our parks team here. We've really taken this up a whole nother level here and it's beautiful. Uh, anybody that's come down and can appreciate where we were and where we're going. Each year we get better and better, but I'd say, uh, Neil, we've taken a significant step up uh, this year and it looks fantastic. Uh, we, you know, just, just driving into our park, obviously, uh, people say, boy, with Shawnee, Cherokee, Iroquois, these are our big three. When we talk about the Olmstead Parks that were created back in the 1890s and set a stage for us to do fantastic things as a community, and parks evolved, just like communities evolved. And I'm sure Frederick Law Olmstead did not envision the Dirt Bowl when he did this back in 1890, but I can't think of a better way to bring a park to life. Uh, when you think about this week, I want to give a shout out, obviously, to the greatest uh, Muhammad Ali were, just started the I Am Ali Festival on Saturday. It's going to be going on for six weeks, and you cannot go anywhere in our city that has not been touched by the champ. And obviously, let's see, we'd be going back around 60 years or so, I guess, and, you know, we could be here and we'd see the champ uh, jogging by here doing some road work, uh, both here in Shawnee Park and Chickasaw as well. So I want to encourage everybody to go out and experience the I Am Ali Festival activities that are going on as well. It is super exciting to see some of our parks transform and today we're seeing we're going to talk about the major changes that are coming to Shawnee Park over the next few years as a result of the MSD work that's taking place in the park right now I want to thank Tony Parrott and his team Tony is right over here he's executive director of MSD so a lot of the work that they're doing critical work they're doing around the city for uh, separating our water system and our sewage flow retention basins are having a dramatic impact on the city in terms of making us a healthier city but they're also then allowing us to do some things to benefit the park here is one example of all that so you can see all of this the great lawn that is one of the biggest dirt piles i've ever seen over there that is the future shawnee basin that the basin obviously is going to be under the ground and so once it's done it'll look like the, what the great lawn did before but it allows us to improve our community in a variety of ways, and Tony's going to talk about that. So this is some short-term inconvenience for certainly long-term gain, and I appreciate the fact that we didn't have to wait till that was done before we did the good work on our basketball court right here. But once this work is done over here, visitors to the park are going to be enjoying new baseball fields, new football fields, new soccer fields, and a new open-air pavilion and restroom, the restoration of the lily pond, thank God, and the restoration of the ball house and if, which is the future home of the West Louisville Outdoor Recreation Initiative. So a lot of this stuff that we've been wanting to get done but haven't had the resources or funds to do it before will now be getting done as a result of this project. So that's a great thing. Obviously we want to be a healthy city. 
So these activities here are a big part of that. The West Louisville Outdoor Recreation Initiative will bring outdoor experience and programs to kids who live in the area, and it's being spearheaded by Bennett Knox from Jefferson Memorial uh, Forest. Is Bennett with us here today? Great work, Bennett, keeping a low profile. Appreciate that. Councilwoman Sherry Bryan Hamilton just came here. Welcome, Councilwoman. Appreciate you being here. So let's talk about the Dirt Bowl. Uh, this is one of the iconic Louisville events, and Marty talked about that not just for our city and the history of it and when Ben and Janice put it together back in the day. I mean, all the great Louisville basketball players came through here, and it's been documented around the country now in many different ways. And importantly to me, it gets kids out to be healthy and come together. And this has really been a major project that's taken a lot of us to pull all this together. And it's a big team effort. Uh, it's great to see some of our founders here that uh, Marty's mentioned already. Uh, ben, did you ever think it was going to be growing like this? Pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty cool. And it's almost 50 years old now. And this has been a summertime institution for our city and certainly here in Shawnee Park as well. And it really takes a team effort to get this done. So for this year's tournament, which uh, Neil Robertson is going to talk about here in a second, uh, major court upgrade with this rubberized court. We've been dreaming about a court like this for years now. So, I mean, this is big time when you have an outdoor court like this. And that's courtesy of the former legend on the basketball court in his, well, re in reality, I won't say in your own mind, but that's Joseph Buckets Scott. Where's Joseph? entrepreneur on the basketball court and off the basketball court. So he and his team put, uh, did all the court work and are doing a lot of court work around the community. So Joseph, appreciate you and your team's good work. Let's give it up for these guys. Great to see your business grow. Got his team over here. Appreciate you all. So fiberglass backboards also, a new scoreboard. I mean, Cornell, we're going big time, man. How are you going to adjust your uh, repertoire with this uh, new scoreboard? I mean, the scoreboard is great, so if we, if we run behind, man, don't ask me to speed the clock. <laughs> it's all transparent right now. <laughs> Check out the new apron that's put over here. So we got concrete pads uh, for our bleachers as well, and then a lot of other improvements that you can see around here as well. So if you know anything about basketball at all and being a spectator or being a player, uh, this will put a little extra pep in your step when you're coming here. Now, one other thing that's exciting is the new enhanced electrical system for the court and nearby surroundings. So not only can you hear the fabulous Cornell Bradley's call of the games a little bit better while you're watching, but then other events like we have around the uh, park or courts here, like the West Louisville Appreciation Days, which is part of the park uh, events on July 29th and 30th. We just got much better infrastructure in place here now, so when people come here, it's going to be much easier to put on events, so that's great. And then, uh, as some of you all probably know, also uh, the scoreboard. Let's see. No, the scorekeepers are going to be over here. So uh, Marty Storch is normally down here for that. Joseph, a bunch of the other folks helping up. Uh, Cornell and Ravon will be over here calling the game, so they're not looking into the sun. It makes it easier for them. Will be more accurate. Uh, should we say more accurate scoring, or just easier on the old guys? Well, it'll, it'll keep the sun out your ass. Yeah. So both. Keep the sun out of your eyes. Are we going to be hearing from uh, the voice of the dirt ball here? Okay. We have to do that, of course. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the new scoreboard we're talking about. So anyway, it's just fantastic. So I want to thank a bunch of folks for making this happen. MSD, Councilwoman Hamilton, and everyone involved with the dirt ball and Metro Parks and Recreation. Sebi Ghosh is over here who runs Metro Parks. Thank you, brother. And these courts, I think now, are the best, well, certainly they're best outdoor public courts you'll find in our city. And I'll put anywhere in the country up against these courts now as well. Uh, just a great investment in the dirt, dirt bowl with its long and storied history. Our job is to build on that and make it even better. As Marty talked about, this was a big priority of mine when I came to office was to get the dirt bowl back to the uh, heights that it once was at. And I would say we're there. So I just invite everybody to come out this summer from all parts of the city and enjoy all the wonderful activities we have together while we're staying healthy and having fun and the great Louisville tradition of basketball. So congratulations, everybody. Thank you, Mayor Fisher, and thanks for what you have meant to bringing this event back to our community. 
I also want to echo the mayor's comments about Joseph Scott. I'm not going to call him buckets because I have not seen him make a bucket. I've seen him shoot it a bunch. I've never seen him play defense once, but that's okay. He said he's old now. So, uh, but Joseph and, and really uh, taking a chance on some uh, second chance individuals. Joseph, you deserve a big round of applause for that. You know, for uh, now for a lady who, just like our mayor, doesn't need any introduction in this park and the community for that matter, she's been very supportive and engaged in the Dirt Bowl process and improvements to Shawnee Park all along and District 5. She knows her constituents and what it means to be a true public servant. And if she doesn't remind me, her legislative aide will let me know uh, 17 parks, three community centers, golf course, cemeteries, parkways. Did I miss anything? That's what I'm saying. She lets me know. So uh, now, Maestro, a little music for Councilwoman Hamilton. You're a mess, Marty. I don't know how to top that one. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank MSD for their financial contribution uh, to Metro Parks that made uh, the Dirt Bowl Court improvements uh, possible and all the other improvements that the mayor already spoke about that are coming over the next two years as a result of the Basin Project. Uh, the court has been extended, which makes it safer for the players when they run off to the back, the, the new improved seating, the scoreboard. I mean, we're big time now. I, I just love it. Many people like Ben have played here and become legends, and they've helped make Shawnee Park historic. Not, not that it wasn't already, but the Dirt Bowl is, a, is just known all over the country now. They've made it the place to be. And hopefully with these improvements that will go on for years to come, with all the violence going on today, the Dirt Bowl is a place where young people can come together in a spirit of friendly competition, love, respect, family, and friendship, and go at each other on the court, and then leave it on the court, and then go home, enjoy the game, but this is, you know, where rivalries are built and competition and legends are made. So in the true spirit of sportsmanship, I hope we have a great summer. We have a great facility here. And let's keep this tradition going for many years. Thank you. Sherry, I, I chose the music. I want you to know. Now, kind of the reason we're here today, both mayor and councilwoman have put up some funds the last couple fiscal years, but nothing compared to what Tony Parrott and MSD have committed to improving Shawnee Park for everyone to enjoy. Almost $3 million when you total it all up when the work is complete. And he has made a promise. Once his team finishes the CSO Basin project, people coming to Shawnee Park will say, what basin? And a warm welcome for Mr. Tony Parrott Intro, please. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. We clean water. So thank you, uh, Marty, uh, and thank everybody for, for coming out today. Such a beautiful day here in Louisville. I uh, want to thank Marty. I also want to thank uh, Savvy Ghost. Uh, who's uh, been such a great partner for us as we've worked to, to, to bring this uh, project to uh, fruition today. I also want to thank Council Member Sherry Bryant uh, because I can tell you that uh, as we worked through all of the meetings and all the discussions about what MST was going to do here at the park, uh, she was the glue that kind of kept everything together. And I want to uh, thank her because if it wasn't for her, we probably would not be standing here today. Thank you. A round of applause for that. I also want to thank uh, Mayor Greg Fisher, uh, because when I uh, first came to Louisville MSD, one of the first things he told me to do was to make sure that we implement a comprehensive stakeholder involvement process for our construction projects. And so that process is something that was associated with the Shawnee Basin. Uh, which is a huge project. It's a $60 million project. And first of all, we were going to have it located over there off the Southwestern Parkway, and folks said, no, you're not. 
And so we continued to listen. We continued to get feedback. We continued to uh, listen as to where folks wanted the basin to go. And so once we convinced folks that we were already in Shawnee Park, there's a huge uh, tunnel system that exists and a flood pump station that exists right now in Shawnee Park. And so once we let them know that this was a project that was mandated under the federal consent decree and a project that we had to perform, it was about, okay, how do we bring it forth and how do we make it happen? And so the stakeholder process that we had, we had numerous stakeholder meetings. We had numerous meetings. I think we hosted one over at the, what was the name of that place? The golf course. The golf course. Uh, we had a meeting over there. And so we got a lot of feedback. And I also want to recognize, uh, in addition to uh, Metro Parks, just uh, working with the Olmstead folks, who also were very vocal and very attentive and involved in all the meetings that we had. But it's because of the, the work that we had with all these stakeholders, this project, uh, the basin project, as you can see, is very huge and it can be disruptive. But as we implement these projects, not only here in Shawnee, but throughout other parts of the community, our focus is on how we can be, number one, inclusive, how we can be transparent, how we can make sure that we are putting local labor on uh, to work on our projects, how are we making sure that we're putting uh, small and minority owned businesses to work on our projects. That's what our message is all about. And so as we do this project here, it's going to probably wrap up in about 18 months. But once we're gone, Marty, uh, you will never know that we have been here. And so by working with the stakeholders, we came up with a uh, plan to make sure that the amenities that once we're gone can be a seed that will bear uh, f the fruit of sustainability and and also revitalization and so once we leave here once we leave this park once we complete our work there will be stuff just like this basketball court that will live on for generations and so we're very proud and uh, very glad to be a part of this thank you very much Sorry, Tony, I couldn't resist that song because if it wasn't for that, we really wouldn't be here today. And again, the improvements, you will notice some improvements. What you won't notice is the work. The old ball house that has set vacant for, what do you think, Sherry, 30 years? <laughs> At least. That will become the engaging children in the outdoors home base. Bennett Knox will be running that program. Again, the Lily Pond, it's been long need of repairs. The dirt bow court, the baseball, the original, uh, I, not the original, I'm sorry, Ben. The second dirt bow court, when it became the dirt bow, was the dirt bow that was in the bottom down there is being repaired. We're getting parking, paving, like I said, about $3 million worth, and Paul Horning Field will become back in prominence. So uh, you heard the mayor call him commissioner, and I'm sure a few other names every once in a while. He's a great community activist and a believer in Shawnee Park. From his involvement in the Dirt Bowl, Juice Bowl, helping with mowing of cemeteries, or just helping out others. He brought together a strong community conversation last year at our recreation uh, centers with his winner take all documentary and panel of speakers discussing issues facing youth and consequences of their choices. But on a lighter side, Neil, you will have some cushion when you uh, when you sustain one of your injuries this year when you get beat off the dribble and uh, you can thank Joseph Scott and his team when you fall so uh, so Neil just for you we have Wow thanks a lot Marty <laughs> uh, well first um I want to thank everybody for coming out today, and um, I want to thank all the speakers who came before me and everyone who put a lot of work into making this as, success, as, as successful as it could be. Um, man, I don't know who, who he was talking about, but you made me feel good about who I am while I'm standing here, man, because the only thing I could do with the person that I am is give back to the community that I love so much. Uh, I'd like to thank Mayor Fisher for giving me the opportunity and believing in me and also seeing the vision of what this park can become and how it could relate back to the people in the community of West Louisville. Uh, 
I'd like to thank everyone who works with me so hard. And they may not have mentioned their names, but they're just as important as the people who came before us, who put the $3 million in, um, who paved the courts, because they work so hard each and every day to try to make sure that this thing is a success. Um, we're going to start June the 17th will be our first uh, day of plan. We're going to start around 2 o'clock. We're going to re release some balloons of the seven-year-old who was shot and killed. We're going to bring her, um, their family down here. Going to give them jerseys with the number seven on the back of it. And, and, it, and it hurts me inside to see all the crime and violence that's going on in our city. And I, I don't have any answers to what we can do other than try to come down here to get to know each other, to be involved with one another, you know, because even us out here today, you know, this is a great thing because some of the people that I see, I don't even know. And I want to at least say hi to you so I can know you. So if you cut in front of me while I'm driving, I won't get as angry as I do <laughs> if I don't know you, you know. So I want to make sure I even know my neighbors. So by doing that, if we could all come together, where we can all be a, in the same place, the same location, because I'm going to tell you, it's a guy that lived right next door to me, and I lived there for nine years, and I don't even know him. I never even knocked on his door to introduce myself to him. So, and that's bad, and that's what we're trying to do, trying to make sure that we get to, to know each other. But once again, I'd like to thank, like I said, Mary, thank you very much. You're doing a great job, you know, uh, Marty, you're doing an okay job too. And thank you there, sir, for committing yourself to the park and to the people in this community. And sir, thank you too. I don't know your name, but I will get to know your name. And the people that I don't know, I will walk by and to you at least shake, my, shake your hand and say, my name's Neil Robertson. So maybe you might be a cop. If I do a, a road pass a stop sign, you might give me a break or something, you know, just from you knowing me, you know what I mean? So that's what, that's what not I'm trying to do, trying to get some freebies, but I just want you to know me, you know? I just want you to know who I am, and I want to know who you are, because we all can play a part, not only in this community, but in the world, you know? We all can give something to the world, to the community, you know? But I don't know what it is from you, but I know what it is from me that I could give you, you know? The question is, will you take what I can give you, you know? But thank you all for coming out and listening to me babble a little bit, but thank you very much. Yeah, yeah I did. Neil, any predictions for this year? I mean, uh, I mean, you want to go on a limb? Yeah, I will. East end. Oh, that's not going out on a limb. That's not going out on a limb at all. It's a good thing Tommy Gibson is here to keep him in line. It's a good thing that Tommy's here because uh, Neil doesn't go out on a limb too often. Now we have the voice of the Dirt Bowl in a court named in his honor for his tireless involvement in making the Dirt Bowl what it is today. His humor and wit is part of why people come down to the Dirt Bowl. He should have patented a long time ago because he's often imitated, but he's never duplicated. One of his signature calls is name of a book detailing the Dirt Bowl history. So something Neil doesn't get to hear very often, bang, I said bang, Mr. Cornell with 2L Bradley and his own vernacular, hit it, my man, hit it. Okay, well, as always, how I always start. Let's give it a test. One, two, three, and four. Testing. One, two, three, and four. And uh, we have power. With that being said, I'd like to say good evening to everyone. And at this particular time, I'd like time to welcome each and every one of you to the Dirt Bowl. The Dirt Bowl, Metropolitan Parks and Recreation, biggest and best summer basketball tournament. And according to CB Press International Rankings, currently ranked as the number one, the premier summer basketball tournament in the nation. And the CB stands for Cornell Bradley Press <laughs> and not Cephas Bunton Press. 
and when I always mention my man Cephas Button, for those of you who don't know Cephas, Cephas was an outstanding basketball player for Valley, went on to play for Sullivan, won a national championship there, then went to Western. And Cephas went on to become a coach at Western, also South Carolina. Is he a policeman now, Neil? And now he's a policeman in South Carolina. And I always said to everyone, I've, Cephas was always my West End mold role model. He's someone that I encourage a lot of young people to be like. And that respect was that I knew Cephas. I never seen him drink. I never seen him smoke. And I barely knew Cephas had a girlfriend. But anyway, uh, I want to advise everybody to come on down to Dirt Bowl, have a good time here. I also like to thank the mayor, Marty, uh, my man from MSD, and everybody that had anything to do with making this court what it is. Also, uh, you told a lie about Scott, man. Scott can play. I can't let because Scott goes to church almost every Sunday. Thank you very much. Cornell also always says, I cannot tell a lie. So uh, <clears throat> if, if buckets can play, then, then buckets can play. <laughs> Last but not least, one of the finest ladies to grace these courts and stages across the world, one of the two originators of the Dirt Bowl in 1969 when she was only three, <laughs> a great recreator, singer, dancer, and much, much more to our community. So with this in mind, just one last time, Robert, Janice Carter. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me here today. Me and my cohort. Come on. Big Ben. <laughs> if, it, if it were not for... Mr. Ben Watkins, and if it were not for Parks and Recreation at that time, uh, under Charlie Rob, right. under Charlie Rob, Ben and I were park supervisors at Algonquin Park, and we needed to find something to bring people to the park, to bring families to the park. Ben, uh, former, uh, well-known, nationally known basketball player uh, at Jackson State and Central High School. Myself, cheerleader, Shawnee, and Kentucky State. We worked in the park together, so we came up with the idea of the Dirt Bowl. That's why we never, I never thought that this would be here today, happening. But what I would like to just say, and then I'd like, if y'all don't mind, for Ben to say something. Um, I like the parks to be des all the parks this summer to be designated as safe zones. Our kids need to be able to come to the park and feel safe. The adults need to make sure that the kids feel safe this summer. You know, we don't need any, any mishaps. We don't need anyone um, taking advantage of the opportunity to make mischief. We need to make our parks safe for our children because it is all about the children, the basketball brings the families and the community together. And I thank you, Ben Watkins. Thank you, Janice. Uh, first of all, I'd like to have a moment of silence for the families that have lost loved ones during this violent time we've had in Louisville. And also, I'd like to have a moment of silence for one of the greatest ball players that ever played in the Dirt Bowl, Mr. James Caldwell. Uh, he passed on a couple of weeks ago, and he uh, holds the uh, scoring title for the Dirt Bowl at 44 points and then hadn't been broken since. So uh, we'd like to have a moment of silence for them. Thank you. Uh, first, it's an honor to be here. Uh, like I said, I, I never thought in 50 years this would uh, amount to such a big idea or such a big, uh, commotion for what we have uh, put in Louisville today, but it's an honor to be here. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a supernatural thing for Louisville to have a basketball team because Louisville is known for basketball. Louisville has probably 
turn out no more than maybe a thousand players that probably have succeeded in their lives with basketball behind the dirt bowl. A lot of guys were recruited through colleges behind the Dirt Bowl. The Dirt Bowl is a major factor to our community because it brings families together. It helps kids to understand that you can play ball and have fun. You don't have to have a, a knife or gun or shoot dice or run the streets. You can be down here with families and friends uh, to love one another and play the game of basketball. Uh, I have to thank Mayor Frischer and uh, all the other people that contribute to the Dirt Bowl, this is a fabulous court. Uh, I've never stood on anything. This is a Tarkenton floor. I, I'm, I once said something about a Tarkenton floor, but I thought they would never put it into play. Uh, a lot of kids can't play on, on asphalt because of their background in college. They come down here, they get hurt, they twist the leg or a knee or something. They, they won't be able to play in the, in the, in the college uh, atmosphere. So. With this set and the basketball court being a talk on the floor, it gives them a little more security. But uh, I'd like to thank all of you all for coming out, and I hope we have a great summer with the Dirt Bowl. And at this moment, I just say thank you. Thanks, Ben, Janice, and everyone really for being here today. And kind of in the spirit of continuous improvement and celebrating our successes, David, let's get the clock started and officially ring in our new dirt bow courts and amenities. Thanks everyone for being here. Have a great, great summer and come on down to the dirt bow.